so I'm off with COVID. Can't do much else. Let's show you my collection. Why not? So I'll show you first the little setup that I've got. I've still in the process of building some more shelves. All of them up there. Got them along there. There was another one up there, but funnily enough, last night literally that almost came down, so I had to take it down. So I'll show you all everything separately now. So this isn't full collection. I've still got some other pieces that I need to put into the collection yet, but they're not finished prepping. So for the time being, this will be what I'll show you. And then once I've got more stuff in the collection, then I'll show you at a later date. So let's get started. So we'll start on the bottom shelf, seems. That's the first one. You've got this absolute belter of a uh, Gramoceros Thorenzi. Found these from Ravenscar, they're quite a common Ammonite, but usually get them in multiples. As you can see, needed a glue back. But that one didn't come out bad at all. Very happy with that. Looks really, really nice. Next up, you've got this absolute brilliant Zugo Dactylites. Funnily enough, these aren't Dactylioceros, they're a completely separate species, if I remember rightly anyway, I'm not 100% sure. They're pretty rare to find, and the distinctions between normal Dacs and these aren't, not, not, aren't much, but these are absolutely quality. I've got another one of these that I'll show you in a second, but I do love a good Zugo. So here's the other uh, Zugo Dactylites, not as well preserved in this one. I did like the matrix finish that had gone in, perfectly smooth, really, really nice. Sits nice in the nodule. Remember that? Yeah, I was all glued back over the days of gluing everything and uh, and prepping from the other side. That was fun. But yeah, love Zugos. So I can't remember if I got this on film or not, but everybody knows I love Elegantisaurus. So here's an absolute stunner of one. Found this about four months ago, I think. It wasn't that long ago. Absolute perfect pop. Don't get much better than that. That's absolutely quality. Don't find many single ones neither. There's de of decent sizes that is anyway. Usually they always come in multiples, which I'll be showing you in a minute, but yeah. Not bad that. So here's one I've had a number of years. Really nice little Elegantisaurus multi. Couple of small ones on there. Decent sized piece there. Turn it over though. And I have prepped the other side. Not as good quality on this side, but it's pretty good, don't you think? So, here's a prime example of why you hit everything that you see, even if somebody split something. I found this, I can't remember where I found it. But yeah, all that was showing was this piece of keel here, that was it. Somebody has split it and gone, oh, it's just a knackered up ellie, I'm getting rid of it, leaving it. I tapped it down here and all of these started to appear and obviously the painstaking prep of uh, of prepping that as you can see it's just absolutely rammed there is one right there in the center that overtakes the actual middle of the largest one love this block this will never leave heavy lump and all and I've still got there's all of that there I could prep from the other side at some point if I wanted to but maybe one day so before we go on to the next one, this one's a nice memory type one. So when I first started, I'd only been doing it about two or three months, and I really, really wanted an Elegantisaurus. I'd never found one before. Then one day I went to Runtick Bay, and then sat there, right at the bottom of a cliff fall, was this. There was just a few poking out, just around the edge. I took that home, and back then I had a Dremel, and I prepped I've re-prepped this since, but I did 90% of the prep with a Dremel, which is very, very pyritic. It took me probably 40, 40 odd hours to do back then, whereas these days it'd be nowhere near that much, maybe six hours tops. But yeah, this is one of my favourite pieces. I love it. So yeah, as you can see, there are all these pieces showing here. Where was the other piece? There. So I'll whack that. Look at that. You don't get much better than that. Just for a size comparison with my hand, two hands holding it up. This is a perfect, perfect specimen. It's even got aptic eye, which was the, uh, it's the Ammonite's jaws. Still don't think that they're actually 
belonging to this Samonite specifically, but it's pretty cool just to have them on there. But as you can see, there's just loads of them in there, it's packed all the way through, a lot of worn ones. I may reverse prep this one day, because there's a lot of Matrix still on that side to go. As you can see, I've took the pen a little one or, two, one or twice down there, but for now, I'm very, very happy with that. So, here's one that everybody will pick up at some point. You will not start, you'll stop picking them up at this, later on down the line, I promise you. You'll get sick to death of them. But not bad for an 8 inch uh, Belmanite, Fragmacone preserved in shale. I mean, it's a really, really nice piece. I don't really pick them up anymore unless they're overly big or they're really wide and they've got the Fragmacone because that's the most important part. But that's pretty cool, that. I do, uh, I do like the odd Belmanite every now and then, and that's a keeper, for sure. Another little weird one while I'm at it, why not? Uh, I think this is from Robin Hood's base, so it's probably a middle Elias bivalve. Looks like a pair of butt cheeks with the legs crossed. <laughs> My dad also said that it looked like a turd, but hey ho. But yeah, don't really collect bivalves that much, they don't really interest me, but it was just a cool looking thing, so I thought, why not? I don't prep them very often, and came out pretty cool, I think. Loads of detail. So yeah, pretty snazzy. So moving on with the theme, we might as well go with um, middle ice material. This tiny little piece. It's a couple of uh, ammonites known as Gagatisserus. Pretty cool. I don't know if you can tell. Where is it? Right there. That's all here. That's what's known as a circulid worm. And it overtakes the uh, like parasitic insects. And they terrorise them. A nice little bivalve sat on top of that little Gagatisserus. It's just a cool little neat uh, neat piece, that. I'm very happy with that. Always, uh, always pick up the small ones. They can turn out nice. Another little tiny one while I'm at it, why not? These are uh, full of... what was it? There's a couple of Amalthius, Subnodosus, and I can't remember the other ones. Maybe, Plur maybe Plurocerus uh, Palmatum, I can't quite remember, but there's a few that sit in this block. And there was on the back, right here, this would have been a bigger Amalthius, but never made the cut. It was uh, absolutely knackered, so that's a pretty cool little piece. So, while we're on the middle ice, small pieces again of the middle ice. Here's a nice piece that I found. I don't even remember where I picked this up. I think it might have been Robin Hood's Bay at Boggle Hole but somewhere around Robin Hood's Bay but there's a nice, what well, I think's Androgonoceros but you flip it over there's another little Androg there but what else is in there there's lots of gastropods I've not really picked up many gastropods before so I thought that was pretty damn cool to have nice little collection piece might re-prep that one day because I'm still not happy with how that turned out but yeah it's a pretty cool little piece that Nice uh, calcite pleuroceros, you can see the brown calcite inside the middle. Came out really nice this one with a little uh, bivalve that's been prep matrix free. Hanging out of the mouth border of it. I do love pleuros, I think they're a really interesting ammonite. And here's another one, just for comparison. A little bit of damage there but it's nothing terrible. More bivalves as you usually get. But yeah, Pluros are a uh, pretty cool thing. If I get the light better, there we go, that's much better. Yeah, probably Pleurocerus holscarensi is my guess. I'll have to research everything again, I always forget what the species names are. But yeah, two pretty cool ammonites. Next one was an absolute pig to prep. Like, it were awful, wouldn't abrade well, wouldn't pen well, it was just all fine detail work constantly because the matrix was just that soft along with the calcite mixed in with it it's the same uh, the same hardness as the matrix so it's very very difficult to prep but I did an okay job with it for when I, would, when I did it so I'm pretty pleased with this it's not beautiful but I might let it go one day and hopefully I find a better one at some point so yeah if I remember rightly the uh, Aegeoceros I think that's what the Androgonoceros family come from. I mean, it's not fantastic at all. Get the light better on it there. There we go. As you can see, it's got lots of white calcite in it with the brown uh, 
Ironstone Matrix, I think that's the Matrix anyway. It's nothing special at all. But they're, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how it came out to say how difficult the prep was, especially when I was doing it and I wasn't so, um, what's the word, informed, let's say. So yeah, still a pretty cool piece regardless. So I found this quite a number of years ago, way back when, and it turned out to be quite a rare ammonite. It's called a, uh, bloody hell, Protogrammoceros, that's flipping it, my brain just went there. Yeah, Protogrammoceros. This isn't a fantastic specimen, but it was the first one that I found of this, which then ended up leading to me finding quite a number of these, which I'll show you in a second, because there was a... Uh, you know, they're not terribly rare, but they're quite rare. So, next up is this heavy lump. Still don't know whether I'm going to get rid of this and just take it down there, because as you can see, the mouth borders, the outer wheel is just completely gone. But this is a big, big piece. Again, Protogrammoceros, with Elias. Found this wearing out on the top here, as you can see where, I'm, where I would have seen it. And then prepped it out quite stylishly, as you can see. Bowls in. It's a pretty cool ammonite. I don't have anywhere to put this at the minute because it just weighs an absolute ton. But yeah, pretty good. And now for the better one. Look at that beauty. Prep to a decent 3D effect. I do need to flip and give this a clean actually. Worries me that what looks like some maybe pyrite dust in there. I'll have to have a look later on. But yeah, that one's pretty damn good. All shape the matrix from the mouth border around. It's a really, really nice ammonite. Very happy with that. Yeah, perfect middle too. Check that baby out. Next up. The Amalthius. Quite well known to have the um, pie crust keel. It's not very well preserved on this. See if I can get it. Yeah, there you go. You can see just there. It's like a pie crust. Really rare ammonites to find. Only one of these that I've got. It's a damn big matrix. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Really crushed on the outer world, but I'm not complaining. I do have an Amor that Ormoceros that I've almost finished prepping to actually add into this collection with this, which I'll show you another day because I've not finished prepping it yet, but yeah. Malthus, I know, I think it's Margar maybe Stokesy or Margaritis, this, I can't remember which, but it's a good one. A few small ones to start the next shelf off. Got this uh, little Lytoceros. I think, if I remember rightly, this was from Saltwick Bay. Liam actually found this and he didn't want it. So uh, gave it me because I don't actually have a Lytoceros in the collection, so it's not a perfect specimen, but it does have, you see that there? That's what's known as a xenomorphic oyster. Now these oysters, they latch onto the body of the ammonite and actually take shape. Let's see if I can get a better... It's trying to take shape, you see, of the ammonites in a whirl. Really interesting thing, because I've had them on quite a few different ammonites, but this is the only one that I actually keep in the collection, for the time being anyway. Now, I'm not a fan of cutting polished at all, but I did polish this Phyloceros. As you can see, look at that. Absolute pristine sheen. And when you get close to it, you can see all the inner calcite, the chambers. Absolutely brilliant. I do have that big one that I found recently that I am going to cut, I am going to polish on the uh, advisory of Mr. Marshall, so thanks Mike, that will be getting polished. But yeah, cool little Philo, was some uh, more of it there, so I polished the inner chambers on the Matrix. Neat little one. Let's go on to Hildy, shall we? Found this one in, where, where was I? This was north side of Saltwick Bay, so Whitby side. It was in a uh, big four. Pretty cool with the, uh, I can't remember the terminology for the mouth border, but kept that. Middle's not fantastic in it, but it just looks a really nice piece. Might get replaced one day, but you never know. It's a good piece to have. It's quite nice. It'll sit in the collection for now. So this is my first ever Hildy. Still have it in the collection. I don't want to get rid of it. It's not perfect, but 
for the size of when I found it, I was stupidly happy. Check this out. That was my first Hildy. It's got a small, where is it? Yeah, it's got a small bit of wear and tear just there on the R keel. But for a flipping Hildy, that's not bad at all, is it? For your first ever Hildy. I think it's it's about five inch. It's a good size for a Hildy. Yeah. First ever one. Then one that I've shown you before, but still rare as hen Steve to find. The double Hildy. Did try prepping it on the other side when I started out, but part of the inner whirl had gone, so I never bothered with that. But rare as hen's teeth, and guess what? I have got two Dua Hildes in my shed at the minute that I'm working on, and I've got a nodule that looks like there's three in it. Not 100% sure yet on that. 100% two, maybe a third, but I need to prep down into it once it's glued back up and check it. That could be good. I'm going to prep that all matrix free just with them attached to each other. Should look pretty good, but yeah, double hildy, can't beat it. I do actually need to clean this one up a little bit better, I've not touched it since, but this is a uh, Hildoceros semi-palatum from Ravenscar. Why is this light being in? There we go, that's a bit better. Yeah, Hildoceros semi-palatum, usually you can tell because they'll have like a groove, right, that goes down in between the, in between the ribs and then in the inner part of this well. Really nice little ammonites. I've not got too many of them. I do have a quite a few in the shed actually, but I've just never bothered getting around to prep them. But they're a pretty good ammonite. So, anybody who knows me, you might have figured it out by now, but I like a lot of matrix around my ammonites. I like to carve it. And there's this one here. You know, it's only a, what? Might be a four inch hildy at best. But I just like me having lots of matrix around it makes it a lot more interesting to see. I think that's pretty cool. Really nice mouth border attached to it. Could do with a little reprep to be honest, which I'll get around to one day, but yeah. Now for the big boy. Now, that other one that I found the other month, that's not been prepped yet. Still got some more work to do on that. It's been a pain in the ass, waiting for my T-Rex pen to come from Zoic, and then I'll get started on that properly. But it's my biggest one up until that point. This little baby. Absolute stunner of a Hildoceros lucitasium. All prepped. As you can see. Stop focusing on my eyes camera. Can't bother to turn it off. Where's the light gone? Now, that other one that I found the other month. That's not been prepped yet. Still got some more work to do on that. Being a pain in the ass, waiting for my T-Rex pen to come from Zoic, and then I'll get started on that properly. But it's my biggest one up until that point. This little baby. Absolute stunner of a Hildoceros lucitasium. All prepped. As you can see, stop focusing on my eyes camera. Can't be bothered to turn it off. Where's the light gone? Camera went a bit dud there, but yeah. Stunner, love it. Matrix came out absolutely pristine like I wanted it to. It's the biggest one for now. Other one's bigger. This is 6.2 inches, I think. I think the other one's about 6.8. Pretty damn big. It's always mind boggling, too, to find out uh, how big some stuff gets. You'll get like average size ammonites, so we'll take this uh, Hyposerus, for example. You know, it's about 2.5 inch to 3 inch. Lots of nice little uh, Dactyliosaurus gracils, a few little pyrite bivalves. You know, it's, it's a nice little piece. Sits well in its uh, squared off matrix. You know, it's pretty good. And then you get this thing. Whoosh. Look at that. Huge Harpo. It's just ridiculous. If I remember rightly, what bore it? It's about eight inch, eight and a half inch. <sighs> but up until that point, I'd never found anyone that I found, you know, pieces of Harpocerus, but you never tend to find full, complete, big ones. That's massive, and it's not complete neither. So let's say I don't know. That's all worn right there. 
So there's every chance that this would have gone to about, I don't know, here. So it's probably closing in on 10 inches. Crazy big. Next up, might as well put some bone pieces in there. This is a really odd one. This is, um, I've spoken about it before, gyrosteus. It's a type of fish. Look at it, that sun's a bit bright, isn't it? Yeah, I can't quite remember exactly what part of the fish this came from. I remember rightly it was some part of the skull where this starts attaching to the skull, maybe. It's a really, really, I mean, look at the texture on it. It's just a really odd piece of bone. I like gyro anyway, so I always collect it. So, this is how scarce my bone collection is. Got that piece that I found out about a month ago, though, that might be almost prepped. But you'll have to wait and see that, but yeah. Love the little uh, ichthyosaur vert in a nodule, sat there. It's not a pristine one by any means, but I don't have many bone. It's what it is. Next up, it's a really, really chunky piece of rib. Has the uh, neural attachments that would have gone onto the side of the vertebrae. So, but a vert would have literally just sat here, so where that vert is, let's say, for example, they would have just attached to the side of it and branched out. And then again, another vertebrae. Put my light back on because can't see anything again. You can see the rib attachments again there. But yeah, I don't have too much bone in the collection. But I'm not a true bone collector anyway, so is what it is. Right, let's get on to Dax. So, Dac, the uh, staple of any Yorkshire fossil hunter's collection. Got this absolute beast of a uh, four inch Dac. I think I found this at Sands End, if I remember rightly. Really nice piece, absolute perfect middle in it. I mean, you just don't get much better than that. I know that there was another piece of the mouth border, it came out to about here, but that just got lost in prep back in the day. But hey ho, it's a damn big Dak. So Daks you've got, I can't remember how many variations there are, but there's a lot of variations. I think Yorkshire's got 26 different types of Dactyloceros in it. So you've got your normal ones like this. Let it zoom to your uh, Dactyloceros commune. They're a very, 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 very common DAC. But you can't beat them. They're easy to prep. Everybody starts out on DACs, I'm telling you. Then, I'm not sure actually if that is a commune or not. I don't think it is. I can't remember what though. But this little one, let me check that out. Loads of little tiny little mini DACs. It's on top of that one. It's a really nice piece that. That took ages to prep and get them just out. This is what, one, two, three, there's four in total, little ones, there's another one right there that is very difficult to tell. Then, you move on to your uh, Dactyloceros semi-salatum, which you, they run really deep into the middle. Really nice piece, as you can see, they go really deep. But if you do in comparison to, let's say, a normal Dact, they don't go as deep. But I do love semi -salatums. They come out of the, uh, the beds known as the grey shale beds. Really easy to prep. Depending these, depends how they split. If they split well, easy to prep. If they don't split well, they're a pig. Hate prepping the bloody things if they, if they don't split well. Then, you of course have the monster. That will always sit in my collection now. Mouth border complete. I mean, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. That's almost a five inch DAC. That's like a centimeter away from a five inch DAC. It is huge. Heavily piratized, so the preservation's pristine. Middle's there. Excuse me. <sighs> you don't get better than a DAC like that. You, you just don't. That'll, uh, that'll always be a collection piece. Now, I don't really have many Peronoceros specifically in the collection. Some are an absolute nightmare to prep, but this one is a uh, per Peronoceros terriculatum, and it's a big one for its size. It's absolutely massive, perfect middle. Preservation's 
pretty damn good. Some of the inner spines, I don't know if you can tell in there, they've been preserved. But that's just a big, big one for that. Not sure how big they get, but that's a pretty decent size for one of them. And I do have one in that I've got in my shed at the minute. It's got all the spines. I don't think it's a turriculatum. I'll have to have another look to make sure what it is. But it's got all the inner spines all preserved. I'm almost at the middle now. I've almost prepped everything. So I'll show you all that one at some point because it's a corker. Next up is a couple of um, ammonites known as Catecholioceros crassums. I think there's another one, but I can't remember which one it is. But I'm pretty certain these are both crassums. Got this lovely little one here. Again, a lot like the semisolatum, they just run really deep into the middle of it. Really nice little ammonite. They're little fatties. Cool little, uh, cool little ammonite. There's a bit of a bigger one for you. Again, runs really deep into the middle. Nice mouth border on that. I think that was quite bigger actually than what it actually is. Prepped that quite a few years ago, so I can't quite remember. But yeah, pretty nice ammonite. Next up, another one that I've showed before, but it's an absolute belter of a collection piece. It was the uh, Pulposerus Vortex. They are, I think they used to be known as a type of Perinoceros. I think it was Perinoceros Vortex, but I think then they uh, decided that it was a new species. So then it went to Pulposerus instead. I think there's two or, th I think there's three different types of this ammonite. But I mean, they're just really cool. They've got looped ribbon patterns where it reaches the uh, the nodes or spines this one obviously doesn't have the spines but they can have quite I wouldn't say large spines but they go out a little bit really cool prepped on both sides it's just a damn nice ammonite I mean it's fat as hell too it's almost I think it was very close to an inch thick it's just a really really cool ammonite if you ask me and they're quite rare to find you can only find them in one, two places, I think. One of them more common than the other where I found mine. Next up, from the same area. Nice uh, multi-piece. There's a lot of uh, Pseudolioceros bulbiens. They're all packed all the way around it. Right there is a Nodicolioceros. I think that's what it was. Anyway, there's another piece that's right here. Don't think it's associated with that one. If you remember rightly, there was actually a Bellamonite running across the top here, but it just wasn't worth preserving. But yeah, really nice piece to have in the collection. Next up, one that you all remember, showed before, but the video that I did for it was rubbish, so here's a much better image of it. That is the Oysteoceros multi-block that I found at Robin Hood's Bay on one of the videos. Look at that. All this white is actually pyrite that I found out later on down the line. Just look at them all. They're just packed all the way through. Absolute stunner of a piece. I'm really happy with that. Excuse me. You don't get much better than them. That's a proper collection piece. Ooh, faces in the way. Next up, not sure if I showed this actually before, is a Jurassic Nautilus. The only one in my collection, never had one since. I found this at Sand's End, thought it was a Phyloceros. This side was what was showing really difficult to make out. It's just absolutely knackered on that side. There is a little bit of crushing there. But I mean, check the ribbon patterns out. All the striations on it. There is no middle on it, unfortunately, which it is what it is, but you can't beat that. Look at that. Not unless a rare as end, Steve. It's really difficult to find. They only pop up in a couple of places, mostly. You can get them all over the place, but that's a good one. That'll never leave until I get a better one, then I might sell that one. So look out if I do. Now, I did a video the other month saying this might be my best fossil yet. I can't be bothered to go finding it, but do you remember this side? Oh, check that baby out. Loads of little Dactylioceros gracils, along with the Harposerus that I found. Look at that beauty. They run all the way around. <laughs> Not bad that is it. Not bad at all. And that's that guys. So my collection, well some of it until a later date. 
Hopefully you all enjoyed that. I know a lot of people have been asking for it for a while, so that's just some of the good stuff. There's plenty more to come. Hopefully I recover from COVID soon, because this is horrendous. I'm on day six now. Still no better. Yay, it's good stuff in it. So yeah, make sure you all uh, like, subscribe, comment on the video, tell me what you think was the best fossil out of your choices. I don't know what mine is, but I'll leave that to myself. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.